Hey there YouTube, I know it's been a long time, I'm sorry, I get a new computer this weekend and video editing will become less of a chore and more of an enjoyable activity once again, so this content will actually be out on a regular basis. I know I keep saying that, but this weekend, I, I've already put in the order, it's coming on Sunday, so it will happen. Also, on Sunday, it won't be with the new computer probably because I doubt they will have delivered it by then, but at noon Eastern time on Sunday, July the crap, I forgot to look what day it's gonna be. July 29th, 2018 at noon, I will be doing a live stream here from my apartment. If you guys want to come hang out and chat, that'll be great. No special guests as of yet, but we'll see what happens Sunday, July the 29th at noon. Yes. So you probably already know by the title what I'm talking about today, and that is going to be what do you need to be a developer? Like, what do you need to have equipment wise, like hardware wise? to actually learn code and become a developer. I've been asked this question like a couple times in the past couple of weeks, and it's really disheartening to me how it's been proposed because it's not like, hey, like, what do I need? It's more like, hey, I don't know that I have everything that these people have, and I don't know if I can do this. And the answer is really simple, and the list is like super duper short. As a matter of fact, I can hold everything that you need to learn development in each of my hands. So let me go grab those things. Thing one is a computer. Don't pay attention to the Apple symbol. It doesn't have to be a Mac. It doesn't have to be brand new. This is the actual computer that I learned how to code on two years ago, and this is a 2012 MacBook Pro, so that means it was four years old back then. I bought it used for like $600, which is a lot of money for a four-year-old used laptop. I get that, but I had to have a Mac for the coding bootcamp that I went to, so I got this thing, and it worked just fine two years ago. It was actually a pretty decent machine, and I didn't have that much trouble video editing on it when I first started this channel even, and now it's just kind of not the same. It's two years further removed from being new, which means it's two years past its prime further. And yeah, it's a chore to video edit on this. But can I program on it? Can I learn on it? Yeah, because I can play videos from Udemy or Treehouse, and I can open up VS Code or Atom or Sublime or whatever it is that you're using. I can run a local server on it. MAMP works. Everything that I need works on here, and when I work remotely, I use this computer. Is it slower than the computer I have at work? Yeah. Is it slower than that iMac that's, you know, just a year old? Yeah, it crashes more. All of that stuff is true. It's not perfect but it works, and it works for you as you're learning to code. Then the other thing, I can hold it in my hand, but I'm not going to actually pick it up and bring it over here, so I'm gonna take you, you get it, come on. So the other thing is going to be, and I have to get on the floor for this, that right there, that is the internet. So you need the internet, most likely to learn, and that even comes with a caveat. You don't necessarily need to have internet at your house, right? You can always go to a coffee shop and mooch off their Wi-Fi. And there are also books that can teach you how to code too. It's just not exactly as useful as some of the tutorials online, especially for like real practical advice. I find books to be a little bit more theoretical, a little bit more dense, and not having an instructor who you can like ping ideas off of and other students who you can ping ideas off of like on Treehouse and Udemy, it becomes a little bit more tedious and it's a lot more onerous on you and all of that stuff. But the internet, and a laptop. That's all you need. And you don't even need your own internet because there's free Wi-Fi places. You can go to McDonald's or Starbucks or whatever your like personal choices and mooch their Wi-Fi and buy a $1.50 drink and sit there all day, stick your headphones in and learn. And now I wanna ask you guys a favor. In the comments down below, let me know what kind of computer you're learning on right now and be honest, like you don't have to flex. I just showed you, like it's a 2012 MacBook Pro, like I don't have anything to show off. My desk is empty, I don't have an extra monitor or anything like that, it's just that 13 inch MacBook Pro. So let me know down below because I think a lot of people get caught up in looking at people on YouTube or Twitter or Instagram and these like setup inspiration things and they're like, man all of these people have all these like dope gadgets and gear and all I have is this crappy like Acer laptop from two years ago that I bought to play League of Legends on 
and like, what am I gonna do with this thing? And that's just not the case. You don't need some awesome piece of equipment to learn JavaScript, to learn HTML, to learn CSS, to learn PHP. Now, if you're wanting to do like big, big, giant, like crypto things, or if you're wanting to do like really in-depth machine learning stuff, those are obviously going to take better bits of hardware because they're more intense, but that's not what you're gonna be learning when you're first learning to code anyway, so it's fine. You don't need the latest and greatest. You don't need to have an 8K monitor. You don't need to have three mouses. My gosh, I always mess that up. You don't need an external keyboard that's flashy and pretty and RGB, whatever, whatever, whatever. You don't need any of that. And I'm not like talking shit about people who show off their cool things because that's cool. And when I get my new laptop, I'll post pictures of it because I'm gonna be proud of that. And those are things that you should strive for because if you're in a bad situation, financially and you're really passionate about code and you're learning it and you end up getting a job, your financial situation can turn around. We all know the benefits of learning how to code and then you can flex if you want to. Those are like valid things. But the point is, is that the grind doesn't have to be a barrier of entry for you because you can grind with some like low level equipment, especially when you first start. What do you guys think? Do you think I missed anything? Is there anything that you feel like is essential to your learning that's not on my list of two things, a computer and an internet connection? If you do, let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I just really can't think of anything unless you wanna count a laptop, you need a charger. That's true, I, but other than that, that's all you need. I hope this all makes sense. I hope if you're out there and you're worrying that you aren't ever going to be able to learn how to code because you don't have six screens, that maybe this eases your pain a little bit and you see that you really only need one screen. It actually took me a long time to even get used to programming on more than one screen and it's still not always my preferred method depending upon what I'm doing because I learned on a really small monitor and I was just used to flicking back and forth in between the screens. So it took me, like that muscle memory was built into me. So when I got, you know, my 27 inch side monitor, it was hard for me to even use it. I most of the time just put like a video on that screen and have it playing in the background while I worked on one. And that's weird and probably not the most efficient use of a second screen, but it's what I did. If you like this video, feel free to hit that like button. Make sure you guys come to my live stream on Sunday of this week, July 29th, 2018, noon Eastern time. And I promise, I promise, I promise more content coming soon because it won't be terrible and iMovie won't crash on this dumb thing every time I try to add a title. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button down below. You know where that is. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I will see you again very, very, very soon. Like Sunday, July 29th, 2018 at noon Eastern. I'll see you guys then. Bye.